Lauderdale, Florida. This is NAB Show Live. Hello and welcome to NAB Show Live. I'm your host, Ryan Salazar. Today we have a very special guest, Eric Drucker, Director of U.S. Sales at Fluotech. How you doing, Eric? I'm doing great. Really happy to be here. Thanks very much. Thanks so much for being with us. So you just recently joined the Fluotech team. Go ahead and share some information, uh, what you add to that team. I did. Uh, I, I talk about thrilled. I've, I've known some of the members of Fluotech for many, many years now. A wonderful bunch of people. They make absolutely world-class equipment. And, and I'm just so happy to be part of the team and, and, and spreading the word of what they do. I couldn't be happier. All right, so I gotta ask, who are the Light Warriors? We are the Light Warriors. Actually, anybody can be a Light Warrior. All you have to do is just be in love with the concept of light and lighting. Um, it, and it's something that really becomes obsessive once you start to notice it. When, when you start to think about what we're doing, just creating images, still image, video image uh, for news, if you're talking about creating a feature film, whatever it is, it's all about the light to begin with, obviously, otherwise we're making audio files of some sort or another. But once you really start to get into it, you see it everywhere and you begin to appreciate just what's happening around us on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you wanna try and replicate that, that look that you see around you all the time for whatever's appropriate to the scene that you're shooting to help you tell that story, then you just become obsessed. And what we do is we produce the tools that help you create the quality of image that you need to tell your story. All right, so I, I gotta say that we happen to have Fluotech lighting on our set. We've got about uh, 10, 12 lights. Uh, the, the thing that I fell in love so much with those lights, uh, with these lights, is because they're so pure white. Um, and there's a serious difference between uh, the you know pure white lighting. It looks great on a television set, and we literally have a real set. But so so let's talk about this. What is important in lighting and lighting equipment? Well, there's several things. I mean, the first thing is what type of lighting fixture you're going to use, and what sort of qual let's call it not called the quality of light, but the characteristic of light that we're going to get. So we've got hard light, we've got soft light, and then we have everything that falls in between. So. When light first came out, when sorry, when LED lights first came out, they're usually panels, which were mostly soft, semi-soft, a um, little difficult to control. They'd spread light all over the place. Um, but uh, now what we have in addition to that are Fresnels, lighting fixtures with lenses in front of them that really give you a tightly collimated beam of light. And what this does is it gives you a lot of contrast, okay? So it gives you a lot of uh, areas of light and dark. Think about uh, a film noir type movie or, or chiascuro in, in lighting, light and dark, right? Um, so this looks wonderful when you wanna show texture, if you wanna show shape and form and contrast in something. What happens though is that when you talk about the light falling on somebody's face, sometimes you want to de-emphasize that texture a little bit because when you show all the texture in somebody's face, what is it? Usually just if somebody doesn't have perfect skin. So we also now have newer soft lights, which are beautiful that they just wrap around because the light's coming from many different angles and directions at once. They fill in their own shadows just a little bit to take the edges off and, and that it de-emphasizes the facial texture in somebody, makes people look beautiful. So the first thing, of course, is the type of light that you have. The second thing which becomes crucial, of course, is the quality of the color, okay? And we're accustomed going back to film days to basically having two conventions for color, daylight and tungsten. And tungsten was not so much that it was a, a, a perfect color temperature or a perfect light source. Um, in many ways, it's very flawed, actually. But it was what was available and was the most consistent. Um, the problem with LEDs, or some people's LEDs, of course, is that when they're using inferior quality LEDs, you get a big spike in the green portion of the spectrum. We've seen this all the time. Um, now, what will happen, though, of course, is you could say, oh, I can white balance this away in my camera, can I? Well, you can. But the problem is, is that the way that we perceive color, of course, is that we see the light that's being reflected back from a subject. So if the light doesn't contain the color to begin with, it doesn't bounce back. So two things with that. Number one, you can get rid of the green spike by just white balancing your camera, but you'll find that it pulls colors in the other direction too. So let's say the wall behind me was white. If we were using lights which had a very high green spike, we can make my skin tones look close to normal, but what's gonna happen in the white wall is often, it'll start to turn kind of magenta-ish, or at least you know, a light magenta kind of color. So you can see that in the background. That's one of those things that make you crazy once you start to look for it, because you see it often. The other problem, of course, and possibly the even bigger problem, again, it comes back to the light that's reflecting back to you, 
if you're pushing out light, which is high uh, in the green part of the spectrum, very often they're deficient in the reds and the yellows. So what that means is that red and yellow light doesn't get bounced back. So those colors tend to look kind of off, okay? Especially skin tones begin to look kind of muddy. So um, we've seen people that look ill or pasty or, or just kind of uh, uh, washed out a little bit because they're, they're getting a large dose of the green part of the spectrum, but the reds and the yellows aren't reflecting back. With the LEDs that we're using, we, we have them color corrected to begin with, um, there's a couple of different uh, rating indexes that are out there, but uh, I find the best thing to do really is to turn on the camera, turn on the light, have somebody sit down in a chair and see what it looks like. And it seems that every time somebody does that, as you've said, they're thrilled with our gear. So we're very happy with it. All right, so, so Eric, I was told uh, by my good friend Jose Maria Noriega at Fluotech that you have a special crystal ball uh, and you know about the future of Fluotech. Go ahead and share some of that if you can. I, I tell you, I see amazing things. I really do. Not uh, for Fluitex, certainly, but the lighting industry. This is a really fascinating time to be in lighting. There's been very few real quantum leaps in technology, and we're in the middle of one right now. Um, and and what we're going to see, I know from us, is that not only well, the color is good now, which is going to continue to get better, but we're going to see brighter and brighter lights, more output with even less energy consumed. I see things coming up from us very, very soon, which will be replacements for, even for HMI fixtures. You know, we have a fixture which is drawing about 550 watts. It's putting out about the same as probably a 1200 watt HMI Fresnel. So incredible savings. All right, we'll see you at NAB Show New York Wednesday, November 9th and Thursday, November 10th at the Javits Convention Center in New York City. I can't wait to see you. Again, Eric Drucker, Director of U.S. Sales of Fluotech. We'll see you at booth 1549. Have a great day. Thanks. See you soon.